Good morning. Um, you know where Chad and I told you that we were going to Louisiana to see our family? Well, here's a few clips of how that went. So that's good. left a note that says we love you all. <laughs> She's keeping us from going. Help, help. <laughs> love you. <laughs> Act like you like each other. <laughs> we love each other. Oh, know it. <laughs> See, I'm bringing people together. Yeah. Well, that was fun. Um, so yeah, me and Chad are getting up this morning, getting ready. We're going to take Wit back to Florida, where Pensacola is, so that he can enjoy that and see how much fun we had near Fort Pickens Campground. So, here we go. Leaving Louisiana to go to Florida again. <laughs> Just left our parents and got to see them and enjoy a full week with them, so that was nice, but now we're going to go spend a full week, I guess, in Florida, right? A week? Eight nights. Eight nights, so, and uh, Witt hasn't been able to see what we just saw in Pensacola, so we're going to take him and let him enjoy, maybe go kayaking and all the things, play at the beach, so. Excited? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've gone tent camping, but I imagine with this truck full of stuff that we'd be able to set up quite the, uh, quite the camping. We have a lot of stuff like that. Are you ready, Daddy? Ready to be there. Yeah. 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 It's gonna take a while. Yeah, already ran Cheeto. I don't even know what town we're in. But we're hungry. Time to eat. Get it. <laughs> We're ready. We're about two hours past That's our lunch good. time. And this place is very reasonably priced. And super fast. Yeah. Like, it literally took less than 10 minutes to go through. Yeah, it's good so far. <laughs> well, she had killed it. What would you say about those veggie fajitas, dude? Best one I've ever had. This is El Ranchita in Richland, Mississippi, Highway 49 South. Stop. Yeah, agreed. It's very good. It's delicious. Well, way better than we expected. And we eat veggie fajitas everywhere. Homemade chips. Yeah. Sauce is great. to a very, very tiny campsite <laughs> and everybody's packed in here for the holidays. 
Oh, I mean, there's three big trees and like the main like center area of this lot. So I have to do some jigsaw puzzling yeah. to figure out how to get it. We have a big there. tent this time. It's not the one we had last time. So this is going to be a challenge. Okay, now that we've cooled down a little bit, the boys are over here about to eat a bowl in a bag. Wits. First, chili bean, th three bean chili mac. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Wit, Wit hadn't had it yet. He's fixing to get AT schooled. <laughs> got, our, got our AT tent. And the mattress here with us. <laughs> the one we carried yeah. on trail. I'm yeah. thinking that we're gonna definitely take this next time as a hotel with this nice plush thick mattress and a fan. Don't forget the fan. We're gonna need that. It's like not quite pickled, but I mean it's tasty. What are you it's eating? Olive oil. Oh that's the carrot. Is it gross? <laughs> no, it's just vinegar. Let me see. Even though it's not, it's olive oil. Let me smell it. It's just fermented. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's pickled is what it is. Okay, so I was just going to say that this is Witt's second camping trip. Yeah, basically. I <laughs> mean, the last time that I went on a camping trip was several years ago, back whenever we were staying in Colorado. And uh, that was a very different uh, camping environment going from like super dense forested area with a couple tents that we had set up with our friends uh, at the time. And now it's like... RV park style, <laughs> lots of camps, uh, lots of tents, and that sort of things. Florida heat, yeah. uh, sun, sunscreen, all the things that come with it. So, <laughs> all big, the big things change. that you don't like. Yeah, it's going to be good though. It's very pretty. The sunset is beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. The skies have been blue. Well, we have been told that we might get some rain tonight. Um, maybe thunderstorm for about 45 minutes around 10 o'clock. So let's Bummer. cross our fingers for the rain flies. But mm. um, you know, we'll see how that goes. But it should yeah. be fun. It should yeah. be a fun first day. Yeah. First night. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you said very cotton candy. I would agree. In true Florida style, zero chance of rain today, and it's thunderstorming for the next two hours, is what the radar says. Jenny's patching our air mattress, which seems to have a leak, and me and Wit had to throw everything in the truck when it started raining. So. Time to charge stuff and hope this tent we hadn't used in two or three years works. Yeah. We can't hear us too well, but we're here. You know. <laughs> Adventures of following the leading. Oh, oh, there's a bug right there. What is that, Chad? What is that bug? I don't know. What it is? It's like a beetle. <laughs> we're playing with our water bed down there. We tried to patch a hole. It was coming in. These. You want to sleep down there and have a waterbed tonight? You don't know what to think about this, D. <laughs> a minor situation inside the tent. <laughs> Again. Chilling. Mm -hmm. Wait. Is it? It's Hiker Man Night. Okay. Wait, <laughs> yeah, I mean, how bad is it? Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Oh, dear Lord. It's all bad in here. Well, you know it's what? Hey, at least you're uh, dry on top, right? Okay. Well, it, it dripped all the way up that well, side. Well, you're going to be all right. We'll fix it in the morning. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> Happy camping day. It's a camping day. <laughs> all right. Well, just get dry and situated. We'll deal with it in the morning. Yeah. Bye. I love you. Love you. Sleep well. Don't let the bugs get in. Uh -huh. Look at your hair. <laughs> Look at your hair. It's like the Joker. Are you happy? Thrilled. 
So that's our hole over there. And we're trying to get it glued. And so this is the only dry spot in the tent underneath because all this is like seeping water. How about we trash the tent <laughs> when we get home? <laughs> Well, this is the aftermath of the rain that we had last night. <laughs> Chad's over here. Hey. I want to see what a 0% chance of rain looks like in Florida. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. I see it. It's a river. Yay. So apparently these tents do not do the job, huh? Water resistant, not waterproof. Jenny's doing the flip-flop squeegee method. It's working good. There's a lot of water. Let the rain fly yeah. off oh, so yeah. it can dry in the sun today. And hopefully we won't have to worry about it the rest of the week. At least not till Saturday. It does Florida. Close yeah. to the beach, pop up storms. We um, won't do that again though. We'll get some of that water resistant sprayer. Oh, that's the adventure, right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you always tell me this is how you remember stuff when it oh, goes yeah. wrong. And did we not laugh last night and be like, oh, this is so funny and giggled all the way to sleep? But yeah. we slept on the ground. Yeah, our ma air mattress has a hole in it, so me and Jenny slept in the floor of our tent beside our air mattress, so it could hopefully dry and be good tonight. Yeah, that wasn't a restful sleep. We're going to dry this out and hopefully jump in the truck and go get some food here in a few. Back at Cafe Bristol, yeah. uh, same thing we had two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, because Whit hadn't had it and... And it's delicious, so we had to tell him. Must be good. That's so good. <laughs> Can't beat this stuff. Y'all really gotta get to Cafe Bistro if you haven't been. Beautiful day. This was kind of a surprise that we uh, saw this and that everybody was out here for the practicing because we were headed to uh, the fort again to show wit, and everybody's out here watching practice, so that's neat. Bonus! Set up to 
do some trail ready mango sticky rice found that uh cut up some strawberries in it fresh strawberries it's real good but um we're just headed to the beach today uh, i don't think we picked y'all up after um our late lunch dinner at uh at crabs last night that is our... insane hey. Night or yesterday evening, but yeah, we came back here and uh, and set up at our at our next spot. And it ain't too great. Weeds are two foot tall, uh, so we didn't sit outside. Wits got kneed up by mosquitoes, so we uh, we just came back. And went directly to the beach. Good morning. And set up camp, and uh, and then showered and got in our tents. Nine o'clock. We watched sunset on the beach. So anyway, we're gonna cook some breakfast and, uh, and head back to the beach. This is actually gonna be our last full day here. Uh, there's storms moving in Saturday, so I canceled our other four-day reservation. We'll pick you back up in a bit. Just wanted to check in and kind of catch you up while we didn't sign off last night we uh we show you some pictures of video to osprey on my phone so cool uh, so the quality might not be as good but. no i looked at it this morning and it was carrying the fish off that was so cool missed a really oh. good shot one flew right over us holding the fish it was uh, it, like right there and you could see the blood under it and everything and, and i actually had a thought while we were laying there like because i said man i missed it and I told yeah. Jenny, I was like, isn't it weird that we used the phrase, I missed it, when we actually saw it ourselves and yeah. didn't capture it? Enjoy the moment. Like, I didn't miss it. I actually fully saw it instead of looking <laughs> at it through the lens of an iPhone. So. That is a terrible saying, and I told him I'm not going to say that anymore. Yeah, so. we'll see. <laughs> Still eating the leftovers from the AT. <laughs> but this mango sticky rice is one of my favorites. And Whit hadn't had it yet and he just tried it for the first time. Pretty good. Pretty good. He got one. Good size too. All of a sudden, <laughs> Satan sweeps in to steal it. Oh Lord. It looks like a fish too. What we got going? Mm. Impossible burgers. <laughs> oh. Mm. Burger time, burger time. <laughs> zucchini. Yeah. Good. Good that's a regular time. size burger, and that's the way it should be instead of cooking the whole pack as a burger. So the, the big brick. The big brick. Yeah. <laughs> that was way too I mean, much. It wouldn't fit on there. This is delicious. Oh, good. And then Barbecue. we. Barbecue. Zucchini. Just uh, broke camp, got all packed up. We're rounding out our time in Pensacola Beach today with uh, a visit to the National Navy Museum. Yeah, National Naval uh, Aviation. Where the Blue Angels are stationed. Yeah. So, looking forward to checking that out. So, we'll pick you back up there. Tip, when you're coming in there's no weapons allowed on property and that's including in your vehicle or even if you're licensed for concealed carry there's a, a, a gun shop called Jim's five minutes from the base that you can go in and fill out a form and they'll store your gun for ten dollars while you come visit the museum so just so you know don't show up here no mace no bear spray no oversized knives um, or any kind of firearm or ammunition. So get it stored before you come. 
over 30,000 pounds off of an aircraft carrier and yeah. was retired and uh, scrapped, what they say the anchor. Screen. This is kind of a mess, but man, these are these are all full size planes. This is Navy Curtis flying boat. Navy responded to German U-boat threat during World War I by designing a flying boat capable of crossing the ocean more effectively on patrol in the Atlantic. That's crazy. keep coming back to this Japanese plane because it was piloted by Captain Minori Ginda, who is credited as being the mastermind or one of the masterminds behind the Pearl Harbor attacks. This is a, one of the 145 planes that was uh, captured by the Allied troops at the end of World War II and returned on one of our aircraft carriers so that um, it could be analyzed uh, once the war was over, I guess, to see what kind of technology they had. And this was actually a flag, hand painted flag, that just a representation of what the pilots would fly with, uh, townsmen and different people would make these for them and sign them and write notes on them and they would fly with these and the tiger was always a symbol of bravery, but this was actually captured out of one of the planes. This is a handwritten poem that was etched um, in the back of the plane um, and this is what it says that my life may end over the South Pacific Ocean my thoughts turn to the many springs gone by and those yet to come it's an amazing piece of history I just watched Pearl Harbor with my father-in-law the other night and think this is a representation of uh, one of the ships that would have led, led into battle that day, so. This is a representation of uh, where everybody, all the companies flipped over to start producing for war. This is actually a Ford pickup 44 production Ford that uh, Ford Motor Company jumped on during war efforts and converted this over to be a, a bomb carrying truck. It had multiple configurations of tow trucks and different things for the service, but uh, and then this one was actually awarded as a retirement gift to one of the commanding officers. What'd you think? <laughs> I'm just making up stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. It's great. There's a lot of planes in here to look at. Yeah, it just makes me uh, emotional to think about you know all the sacrifices that have been made. Then you stay in a place like this and 
see all the different planes, all the different guns, all the companies that made it, the lives lost. I mean, there's a tally board over there with, you know, planes that were shot down and boats that were destroyed and that sort of thing. And you just kind of stand here in the midst of it all and it's just like, you know, yeah. what what people will go through. And to you know, know that both of your great grandpas was over there fighting, you know, at the same time. It's pretty interesting to see some of them. How many times do I need to write my name down? Alright. Let's keep going. That's pretty. This is uh, an actual camera believed to be used before the atomic bomb was dropped uh, in Nagasaki, Hiroshima. 1945 it was commissioned and used, it says. Huge. What you see in there? I'm pushing everything in there. There's one you missed, the emergency boost pump. <laughs> and another one right there. What you think, Daniel? I'm gonna take it out for a spin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of this plane from up here. Oh, jeez. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you're The true story of survival. Yeah. Three men survived on a thousand mile journey in this raft. And they used the shirts to soak up the fresh water that pulled up. Actual book if you're interested in reading about it. Inside the gift shop because everybody you know in there shopping and stuff but every uh, arm of the armed forces is represented in there they have souvenirs of all uh, branches yeah it's a cool place but what y'all think of the museum overall uh, I mean for this to be free and you could just come in here you could spend I mean if you're gonna read everything you could spend all day here and yeah. really take it in. But. And we didn't get to do any movies or simulators. All that was sold out yeah. ahead. We just dropped in here. But they so. did have a free uh, history channel movie yeah. that we were yeah. There's like some shows and stuff. stuff. And I mean, we were here for a couple hours and there's like a ridiculous amount of planes yeah. that they managed to shove longer. in this place. And really great descriptions of war heroes. You know, the people that put these planes together, the people that, you know, run the crews on the you know, plant, the ships, the yeah. aircraft carriers, and all that stuff. So, I definitely a come. lot of stories. If you're in the area, bring your family. This is a great place. And uh, I don't know if you videoed that at all, but there was a, like, award ceremony for, like, um, some cadets that were doing, like, a, a flight school here today and some awards for what looked like to be a few other officers and stuff in the Navy, so... Pretty cool that not only is this a museum 
full of a lot of stories, full of great planes and history, but also a place where active. stuff is yeah. being done and award ceremonies. There's even like an office upstairs for an education department and also an office for like one of the nonprofits that run for the Naval Group up here. So like it's not only a museum, but it's, it's actively place. like a, a place of creating new well. stories. So. That's really cool. So we're gonna head out get to the truck and uh, we got six hours ahead of us head back to Alabama so we'll uh, check back in if there's something exciting all it is a windshield time now yeah we are headed to the lighthouse now yeah go see what that's all about it's still working so, or what what did it say it's the oldest working one still on the east mm -hmm. coast I think I'm not sure We'll see when we'll we get there. Here we are, Pensacola Lighthouse and Museum. It's dated on the sign as established in 1859, but we actually just read that it was first lit on December 20th of 1824. Uh, definitely one of the oldest museums on, uh, sorry, not museums, lighthouses on the East Coast. Congress in 1823 allotted uh, $6,000 for this to be built. I can't believe it's just uh, Construction began, it says, 1856 and lit in 1859. So that's different what we read online. And it's still in use at the present time. The lighthouse replaced the original lighthouse, mm -hmm. got it, built in 1824 which was the first lighthouse of the Gulf Coast. So <clears throat> that's why I thought that. This isn't it, but they did have the first one. Look at this. Purple one, just keep going. Wow. Like that hey, that's that passion flower, but. That one from the side. Man. Man. Very nice. Ooh, feels good in here. Nice. Admission 950 a person for adults. Got to be out promptly by four. They do last call at 3:40. They said it was haunted. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, didn't need to hear that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Might be something to consider though, cause since the aviation museum closes at four o'clock as well. Yeah. If this is something that you really want to do, and since this actually costs admission and the other one doesn't, you might want to come get your money's worth here and then go and spend as much time there as you can since this actually has a cutoff point. 177 steps, guys. Wow. Look at it. It's beautiful. Or by the air conditioning vent. <laughs> it, feels it does. Oh, we're getting narrow now. It's a climb. She blows. Yeah, it is nice, huh? Wow. Yeah. Hello. Hold on to your head. All right, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm landing, huh? Got it. Oh, wow, it smells good out here. <laughs> Yeah. 
Oh yeah, that's where we were. It's a big one. Right Be prepared. There, that's the way you take over there? Yeah. You said that's the way I was saying. Oh! Hanger. Yeah, that was cool. So I know that was a real quick fly through, but we only had 20 minutes. Uh, so I at least wanted to give you an overview of it. Uh, I'm gonna head down and find Jay and Whip, but. Definitely, definitely worth a stop if you're in this area. Um, come go to the museum, take your time at the museum. Uh, Navy Aviation Museum, not this one. This one, I don't know, I think in, in a good hour here would be plenty. Uh, maybe a little more if you wanna spend some time up on the lighthouse, more than we did, you know. We were up there for 10 minutes, so we gotta get um, they're fixing to close up out here, radio walk through already. <laughs> so they said promptly at four. So I'm gonna grab them. We gotta hit the road.